to travel now and recently I went with our resident travel journalist Debbie Griffiths to the beautiful Emerald Isle, Ireland. We wanted to experience the culture and see the amazing scenery but what we came away with was a real genuine emotional connection. Our first stop was Dublin. Take a look. This is the Hapney Bridge. It dates back to 1816 and for the first hundred years, pedestrians would pay a halfpenny to get across. Well, today it remains one of Dublin's most visited tourist attractions and it's where we start to fill our hearts with Ireland. A great way to see any city is by bike and we've nailed it with an absolute perler of a summer's day. Dublin's potato famine history is marked on the banks of the River Liffey. And actually, this is only one half of this installation. This uh, has uh, another side to it, which is in Toronto, called the arrival, whereas this is called the departure. And actually, the one in Toronto features less people. The whole idea being that they didn't make it. They really relied upon a welcome wherever they went. So when people come here to Ireland, you know, it's a welcome is a really important part of how you uh, interact with people, you want people to feel welcomed and comfortable. Yeah. Exactly. I soon learn you can't go far without being reminded of the national brew. That to me is an empty pint glass. <laughs> right at the angle of Barman and Hobbit, right? Waiting on God Himself to fill it from the heavens. Right? Yeah. What appears on every pint glass of Guinness, you know? A heart. So here you go. Like if this is Guinness trying to subliminally advertise, you know, nice job. Right. And on the road to Guinness, everything starts to relate to Guinness. See, that one actually looks like a pint of Guinness. That's it, and a restored Guinness bar. You really got to run to one point, Mark. I know, I know. It's not just me, though, Debbie. Until finally, we reach the Guinness storehouse. What's the first question somebody's going to ask you when you get back who has been to Ireland? Yeah. Or been to Dublin? Did you go to the Guinness? Yeah, did you go to Guinness? And then you're going to have to go, no. And then you're going to go, well, why didn't you go to Guinness? And then you're going to have that conversation. So instead of that, just go. Mel and I are among the 5,000 visitors each day. 1.7 million explore the seven-storey storehouse each year, making it the number one visitor attraction in Ireland. The process is explained, the history, the marketing, the pouring, the cheeky selfie, clever, and finally, the tasting rooms. So this is designed to uh, see how your senses react. So the first one is the sense of sight. You're then greeted with this, the sense of smell, and then lastly we're going to have the sense of taste. Oh, was I supposed to go? Yeah, well, not go. Uh, a gener <laughs> like a generous. Uh, we like to phrase it as a generous mouthful. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, slancha. Slancha. Ah, yeah, slancha, slancha, yeah. Mel and I settle in with our pints in the gravity bar, and then something completely different. Well, not really. But there's so many pubs in Dublin, it would be really wrong not to do some sort of pub crawl. Uh, I've got one with a bit of a difference for you then. I'll show you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Much, much better. You're very welcome to Dublin and to this, the Dublin Literary Pub Crawl. My name is Frank, this here is Colin. We're going to be your hosts and hopefully your entertainers over the next two, two and a quarter hours, there or thereabouts depending on how quickly you walk <laughs> or how slowly you drink. Colm launched the literary pub crawl more than 30 years ago. So we just suddenly switch into the performance and to the characters and then, and then the thing takes off on its own. So that's really what people liked when they joined us first. You know, they could see that it was a, a different idea altogether and it was a way of experiencing the culture of the pub but also the writers who went there. Because organically, a lot of the writers went into pubs after 1929 because the Irish state didn't want them uh, to, be, to have any influence. So they, they banned writers uh, and uh, to try and stop the Californication of Ireland, they created a censorship act, so writers couldn't get their work into print. They either went abroad or went underground into the pubs to look to journalists to help them out. Oh, so, so that's the link. <clears throat> that's the link. That's, that's the that's, yes, that is the link. In Dublin, it is. They yeah, they came to get work, and they would be paid five pounds for a for a short story, and they spent the money in the bar that night. <laughs> Ah, 
good times. Yep, and I can tell you it was not just writers spending up at the bar either. Now, Debbie and I had an amazing time filling our hearts with Ireland, and we travelled courtesy of Ireland.com and Emirates. Emirates flies daily to Dublin, offering you a seamless one-stop journey while enjoying the airline's award-winning service. And it'll have you arriving, like the cafe crew, in perfect shape to enjoy Ireland's engaging charm and heart-filling experiences. Such a cool place.